Hello everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Gig Cooks, where I make delicious food. Tonight, I will be making Swiss cheese fondue. Erica is half Swiss, and her favorite food is Swiss cheese fondue. So, I have learned to make really good Swiss cheese fondue because of dating her. So, tonight, I'm going to make it for you. So let's get started. For the ingredients, we will need one loaf of fresh French bread, one clove of garlic, half a cup of white wine, 200 grams of Emmental cheese, and 200 grams of Gruyere cheese. It is great to be able to get cave-aged Gruyere cheese, although it is a little bit harder to find. Normal Gruyere works just fine. And also, it is handy for this recipe to have some cornstarch. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I really like cooking. The only times I've ever actually showed on Snapchat or any of my other social media that I like to cook is when I make this Swiss cheese fondue. And now I'm showing in detail how I like to make it. Swiss fondue is pretty simple when it comes to the ingredients, but making it can get a little tricky. First off, we're going to start with the garlic. We cut it in half. Then we take the halves and we rub it on the inside of the fondue pot. You want to cover it very thoroughly so the cheese doesn't stick to the inside while you're cooking it. Okay, and now that we've done that, what I like to do is I like to cut up the remaining garlic into small chunks and put it in with the wine when we heat it up. So about the cheese, you want to have 200 grams of cheese per person. It's kind of perfect when you're making it for two people. And that works out to 200 grams of cheese of each kind of cheese. So if you want to do this with more people, or less people, then you just do the math and do 200 grams of each cheese, or 200 grams per person, times the amount of people. Yeah. If you were going to make it for more people, you just want to make sure you have 200 grams per person and half and half of each type of cheese, Greer and Emmental. Also, don't eat the cheese before it gets melted. That's bad. So Erica's grating the cheese. I recommend doing this first before you warm up the wine or do anything else because you want the cheese to be ready to be melted right away because you want to constantly be adding cheese when the wine is hot. And when you are grating the cheese, you want to use the smallest grate possible. So you want to have very fine cheese because that will melt the easiest. The cool thing I noticed about these cheeses is they're actually both gluten-free and lactose-free. So if you're lactose intolerant, you can have Swiss cheese fondue. But if you're vegan, you're out of luck. Sorry about that. So, the cheese is grated. And the next step is to heat up the wine. So, we're using half a cup of wine, because it's half a cup of wine for 400 grams of cheese, or 200 grams of each cheese, because we're doing two people, 200 grams of cheese each. So, regarding the wine, you don't have to use the exact type of wine that I'm using, the Riesling Gewurztraminer. You can use almost any type of white wine, as long as it's not sweet. So now we're taking our wine, and we're going to put it in the fondue pot on the stove. So to heat up the wine and the garlic, we want to put it on a medium-ish heat, so like three or four. It depends on your stove, obviously. I've done this on gas stove, I've done this on this electric stove and you don't want it to get too hot, but you want it to be hot enough to melt the cheese. While we're waiting for that white wine to heat up so we can melt the cheese in it, I'm gonna give you a quick tip. I highly recommend having some tea with your fondue. Because this is very heavy cheese, it's really great to have something nice and warm to calm your stomach while you eat it. Or for the adults making this fondue, alcohol also helps your stomach while eating the fondue. But I don't drink, so I just stick to the tea. So now this wine is steaming quite nicely and looks nice and hot. I'm gonna use this wooden spoon. I recommend using a wooden spoon to mix the cheese in. And what you wanna do is add the cheese in slowly 
but constantly. You want to add the cheese regularly and constantly stir in a figure eight motion. So let's get started. You don't want to add too much cheese because then it'll clump. And if it clumps, then you've got a problem. That's where it gets tricky. So Erica has taken over. She's stirring and putting the cheese in. You have to make sure you do it gradually and constantly stir. I mentioned earlier something about cornstarch and right now our cheese is melting pretty good but there is a bit of a clump of cheese and that's normal. It all depends on the speed you put the cheese in, what temperature the wine is at, a whole bunch of different things. So. For troubleshooting, at this point, if the cheese clumps up or it's separated or it's just not the consistency you want, I recommend using just a little bit of cornstarch. First, start out with just like a teaspoon and then see how that reacts. And then from there, just add more. And if it's too thick, add just a little bit more wine and be patient. Give it a little bit of time to react when you add something more. It can be a frustrating thing, but the payoff is great because it's so delicious. So, while Erica is working on combining the cheese with the wine, I'm going to cut up the bread. So as I mentioned before, you want a nice, fresh loaf of French bread. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut it up into cubes because we want it to be a nice size to dip into the melted cheese and put into our mouths. You take a chunk of bread and you dip it in the melted cheese. So we just finished eating the fondue and it was delicious. It ended up a little bit too thick, so we still ate it anyways. Next time, we'll maybe use a little bit more wine, but it still tastes good. It's still bread and cheese, and I hope if you try and do this, it tastes great for you and you have fun making it. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching this episode of Gig Cooks. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you've had Swiss cheese fondue before and if you like it or not. What you want me to cook next time. And as always, you are awesome. Keep being you. Thank you for watching.